that tells me it's going to be a short message today. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated in his presence. We're delighted that you're here. Amen. We're glad you've come this way on this Father's Day. Many have been able to get out of town, and that's good. Amen. We thanks, and uh, so we appreciate uh, you that have come this way and bless them that have a chance to get out of town and, and, uh, and be a blessing. Uh, I have a, uh, I have a text today that's very familiar, but especially the first part of it is loved by the young people. Yeah, yeah. So you'll see it. Turn to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. And uh, while you're turning there, I like uh, in Moments with God by David Jeremiah. Amen. I'll let you get there. Okay. Where are we? Uh, Ephesians, the 6th chapter. Ephesians. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. All right. We're glad that uh, Brother Henry, Sister Leslie, we're glad that you're, uh, uh, you came through that accident uh, with your girls and that you're here in the house Amen. still with us and we appreciate and thank God for you. Thank God. We need all the needs there, whatever happened. Amen. That's about the third family vendor we've had here in the last month, month and a half. And uh, I got a new car out of it. Amen. I told my other one. So if you want a new car, just total your old one and see what they do. Amen. No, don't do that. That's, that's not good about you. You want to make sure you're here. Amen. <laughs> I didn't know they were going to tell you. But anyhow, praise God on this Father's Day, uh, talking about children and uh, the delights and all the things we go through. Uh, it says, discipline your children, they will give you peace. And they will bring you the, the delight you desire. Discipline your children, they will give you peace. I may know that you're not the only one they'll give peace to. Oh, you didn't get that? Okay. They'll give peace to others around them, too. Amen. 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 That's almost better than having the peace yourself, you know? Good. Yeah. So uh, it says here on uh, on this day, Father, they say it's Phyllis Diller. How many remember who Phyllis Diller was? Probably yeah. some of the older people. Amen. Yeah. Remember her uh, comic? Phyllis Diller, Diller once said, cleaning your house while your kids are still growing up is like shoveling the sidewalk before it stops snowing. <laughs> <laughs> you have kids, you know how true that is. Yeah. And in the same vein, Jerry Seinfeld said, having a two-year-old is like having a blender but you don't have a top for it. <laughs> Amen to all of that and much more. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God those little rug rats, don't we? Amen. Little, little prom statues. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 All right, Ephesians 6th chapter. If you've got it, say I've got it. Yeah, if you're trying to get it, that's all right. We'll wait for you. And we have all day, so don't worry. Amen. <laughs> when you got it, would you stand with me? As we honor the author of this book. And we'll let you have a seat in his presence and relax and, and let God take over. Amen. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Has anybody taken a deep breath this week? Why don't you take try to take a deep breath right now? I know <coughs> oxygen levels are a little low at times in all that we go through. Yeah, you're not taking a deep breath, so I'm not sure you're alive. Would you take a deep breath? Amen. Amen. All right. Oh. Oh, okay. All right. We're not moving on until you take a deep breath. I want to make sure you're alive. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at someone next to you. See if they're alive. See if their eyes are glossy or if they're, they're still here. Amen. Yeah. Amen. How I many are not sure where you're at, but you're glad you're here? Amen. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Praise God. Amen. Uh, I may know we had a breathing exercise last week in the bulletin. And uh, many times you can uh, uh, get some more oxygen into your brain. Amen. And so when somebody is acting brainless, tell them to take a deep breath. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Yeah, you don't want to punch them in the stomach though, so they take a deep breath. Amen. You want to, you want to be nice. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm trying to help you, but I guess that's not helping you. Yeah. Praise God. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, in honor of fathers 
Amen. And we have honored mothers here recently also. Today it's Father's Day. Verse 1, verse 1 through 5 through 4. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. And what is that promise? That it will, will be well with thee, yeah. and that thou mayest live long on the earth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You want to honor your mother and father. You say, well, they weren't honorable, some of them. That's true. But you can still honor them for the fact that God used them to get you here. Huh? I'm glad God had them get together, and you're here today. Hallelujah. All right, now. Praise God. You act like you don't know anything about the birds and the bees. That's okay. It's okay. I know. All right. That's the promise with uh, the commandment there of honoring mothers and fathers. So if you have nothing to honor them for, you can honor them that God use them to get you here. Amen. Verse 4 is really our text. This is the one that the young people, I think, I like more than anything else. And you fathers provoke, and it's also inclusive here of mothers, but we're speaking to fathers today. And you fathers, you fathers provoke not your children to wrath and anger, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. I want us to look at this provoking not your children from a different angle that God showed me this morning. Amen? And I believe it will be a blessing to you. It will be informative. It will help us to get a real understanding of what is a biblical worldview. What is a biblical worldview? Amen. And let me tell you that the more your children understand what a biblical worldview is, the happier they'll be and the better they'll be off when they get older. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I, uh, sometimes we're not sure what a biblical worldview is. I've never heard anybody speak on it. Amen? Amen. And uh, we need to have it, though. If you don't have a biblical worldview, you will have a worldview. And they are totally opposite from one another. Amen? Amen. One glorifies God and one doesn't. Amen? One worships the God of heaven and one worships the God of state. Amen? The God of government. Hallelujah. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you for the rain of the personal word into every heart. Only you can touch the heart. Amen. The one who made the heart. Amen. The one who made it and gave us a spirit, the spirit of the living God. I thank you. I praise you now. I thank you for ministering to us, helping us, Lord, to understand what a true biblical worldview is so that our children will not be provoked later in the fusion that is in this world today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. 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 God bless you. You may be seated in His presence. Hallelujah. All right. I see my baby daughter there. I see granddaughters. I see grandchildren. I see. Hallelujah. I see you. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. God sees you too. You may know the angels are reporting you being in the service today. Did you know the angels are here? And they record everyone that's in church on Sunday morning. They record how we gave to God. Thank you for your giving. Amen. And uh, they are pulling out records. They have big long ladders. A lady, the Lord showed a lady this vision. And uh, they have ladders that go way up into uh, 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 the building where the records are stored. One day God's going to pull those records out and He's going to reward you for all you've done. Amen? Amen. He's going to reward you for how you sacrificed <laughs> and, and everything that you did for the glory of God and to help others. Amen. Amen. How many know we've got a lot to look forward to? Amen. Glory yeah. to God. We're going to have a great time in eternity. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Some of you are more excited than others. It's going to be a good time. <laughs> Hallelujah. They said everybody in heaven is about 30 to 33 years young. Hallelujah. Isn't that great? Amen. We're going to have them. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to see me with a full head of hair like I used to have. Amen. Amen. Oh, you're going to say, is that a pastor? Yeah, that's him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he looks like the Doobie Brothers. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. And we won't talk about the Doobie part. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> We've all been there. Most of us have done that. Got a t-shirt. Amen. <laughs> Says I was there. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. You fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. In doing the research for this message, I found that there are 32 different translations of this verse. Amen. I was, no, I'm not going to give you all 32 versions. Just three, if you will, in, in, yes, if you will uh, indulge me. The God's Word translation says it this way, Fathers, don't make your children bitter about life. Many children get bitter later on in life. And many today, the number one cause of death among young people is suicide. And so there are some very disillusioned, bitter, hopeless young people. Amen. Then I would say many do not have a world, a biblical worldview, and do not even know what a biblical worldview is. Amen. Amen. And it's true, I believe, for many of us. I myself needed to really kind of uh, study up on it to be clear about really what it is, and, and that I know uh, myself personally, and I can uh, confess to you, uh, uh, I needed some help in that area. Amen. I may know men need a lot of help. That's why he gave us the woman. Amen. He said she was a helpmate. Amen. And, and if she's not if she's not helping you, don't get another one. Amen. You just pray. Believe in God. Amen. And uh, if, 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 if she can't be a friend right now, you be a friend. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to get off of that because that could ruin the service. We don't want to do that. Today. Amen. And so there are 33, 32 different. So he says, don't make your children bitter about life. Instead, rear them up in the Christian discipline and instruction. Proverbs 22, 6, EVS translation says, train up a child in the way he or she should go, and even when he or she is old, they will not depart from it. Yeah. Amen. We kind of go our ways as we grow up, usually in our latter teen years, some earlier, and uh, we... We kind of try to find our way and find what's truth and, and, and looking for this and that. But if you've been raised in a home, uh, you know that God had a way of bringing you back. Yeah. Amen? Amen. And uh, I thank God for that. Uh, regardless of where our parents were, their, their weaknesses, their faults. Uh, if you had a parent that had anything to do with the Word of God, the Bible, and church, and teaching you, you ought to thank God for it in spite of all the other that may have come along with it. Yeah. And I had a lot that came along with it. Amen. But I thank God for the good part. And God has healed me and delivered me from the bad part. Amen. God's a great healer. Hallelujah. God is so good. Amen. And so, uh, NIV translation says, start children off on the way they should go. And even when they're old, they will not turn from it. Amen. Not abandon it. Uh, uh, New Living Translation says, direct your children onto the right path when, and when they are older, they will not leave it. Amen. Amen. What does Proverbs 22, 6 really mean, guys? This is among the most quoted Proverbs in the Bible. Here Solomon, King Solomon, David's son, uh, King David, offers sound advice for parents when a child is raised with the right values and the right perspective, those lessons will last a lifetime. Amen. They will last through every situation, through every storm, through everything the devil throws up against them. They will last for a lifetime. Yes. What you're getting today will last you for a lifetime. Amen. What is going into your heart, your spirit, amen, because it is spirit to spirit. How many know God is a spirit? And then they worship him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Your spirit is what we call the heart of man. Amen. It's where God makes us alive. Amen. Gives us a new heart. And we become a child of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So we ought to get happy about that. Amen. And so Solomon here offers wise advice. And that he shares if you, if you get the values and the right things in them, they will last a lifetime, even though they may go off here and there and find in their way. Of course, Solomon's proverbial Provobial counsel is not an ironclad promise, amen? I say it's not an ironclad promise. Despite the direction in which godly parents point their children, he or she may choose to preserve, pursue the way of the world. 
Is that true? Amen. They have a choice. They have a will. Amen. You keep praying though. Amen. And God has a way of turning their will. Changing their heart. Hallelujah. I was going to hell one moment. And the next moment I was born again. Sins were forgiven. On my way to heaven. Hallelujah. Had one leg in hell ready to drop in with the other one. Amen. And as I tell you. All the hair was singed off of that leg, still none there growing, amen. And uh, don't ask me to look at it, amen. Hallelujah. Just take my word for it. Praise God. How many have been close to dying yourself in God's spirit? Think about it. Amen. Till you could be saved and be born again. I'm so thankful to God. And so it's not an ironclad you know, deal that children are going to automatically pursue this way. They may pursue the way of the world, uh, and yet the foundation, the foundation of godliness gives a child something positive Amen. to fall back on. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah to God. And so when they come to their senses, <laughs> how many have some that need to come to their senses? How many have some that are out of their mind? <laughs> Alright, you don't want to admit it, but yeah, yeah, you've been there, done that. Amen, had that. Yeah, I, I've had some that yeah, were out of their senses. My baby daughter's here. She only attest to that. Amen. Yeah, the oldest one especially. Hallelujah. We gave her a spanking at 16 years old. I wouldn't do that normally or advise you to do that. But she was acting up so bad. Who acted up so bad? And cussing me in my front room, in my living room. What? You did. You said, what did you say? You did what? And so her mother and I got her down, paddled her little bottom. She looked up like, what is this? Well, let me tell you, she never forgot. It. And she never cussed me again. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's because I cut her tongue out. But don't, don't, don't hold that against me. Amen. Amen. She's been the best little girl ever since, I tell you. I don't get a word of a word of the yeah. All right. Hallelujah. Again, I'm not I'm not encouraging anyone to do that. Amen. You say, well, Pastor did it, so no. Come on. I'm just kidding. Say he's just kidding. Yeah, he's just kidding. I say he's just kidding. No. Someone's already sharpened their knife. Now knock that off. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. And so the Bible says, says when they come to their senses, amen? Uh, Luke 15, 16 through 20 says, you know the story about the prodigal son. It says when he came to his senses. How many know there is a time when you raise your kids with God in some way, some form, and even when you don't, that kids will come to their senses? Yes. They will stop their craziness, stop acting a fool, amen? I, I, stop being a knucklehead. Amen. I got some more adjectives, but I, I won't mention them. Amen. They will come to their senses. Somebody confess with me by faith. They will come to their senses. Now make it possible. They are coming to their senses. While I'm sitting here this morning, they're coming to their senses. Yeah, yeah. Because they are flat out crazy. Amen. Amen. You haven't had some crazy ones? Okay. Uh, I was one of those crazy ones. Look at someone that and say, you look like you're one of those crazy ones too. Look at them. You look like you're one of them crazy ones too. We ought to have a contest. Who was the craziest? Amen. Somebody would take the cake. Matter of fact, I saw somebody's picture on that, on that post of the craziest. Of them all. Amen. Right Hallelujah. So the prodigal came to his senses. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Now praise the Lord that that child or that grandchild or whoever it is is coming to the Lord. That they're coming to their senses this morning. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. We're not just speaking words to speak words. God takes our words and begins to move with them. As we speak faith, that's how faith is released. It's through our words. Faith in God and His word is true. As we were confessing that, believe me, expect them to come to their senses. 
I mean, you know, you've pounded their heads long enough. Amen? God is working on them now. I say God's working on them. The Bible says, train up a child and train up a child. But it says, all your children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be their peace. Well, some of your children, they're up and grown now, and you can't hardly teach them anything now. Matter of fact, they knew everything when they were teenagers anyway, so right. hallelujah, just like we did. Amen. Amen. But God is working right now in their life and bringing them to their senses. Can you once again praise the Lord for that? Amen. In Matthew 7, 13 and 40, says, Jesus spoke two different ways. He says, there's a way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be that go that way. And he said, but there is a way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. My God. That is a sad verse. Can you imagine the heart of God when he spoke that? Spirit of God. The way, there are two ways. One is the way of destruction. One is the way of life. And he says, choose life. Amen. And so, uh, uh, there's a way that leads to life, and as we see the hot button issues in our culture today, we find that, amen, they may be in the pig pen, there may be a pig pen on, but sooner or later, amen, they're going to come to their senses. How many know America is coming to her senses? America is waking up. The, the church, the giant, is waking up. Amen. We're finding out who we are and the authority we have and that we can make a difference, that we don't have to let what's going on continue, that we can do something just in our own way. If everyone does something, what they can do, God, you need to ask them, God, what can I do? Maybe it's just pray. Whatever you can do is needed in this hour. Yeah. You can do something. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. And so we see that uh, 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 people are going in two completely different directions. Amen? Yeah. Oh my. <coughs> Let me say it again. We live in a culture, society, where people are going in two different directions. Yeah. Many are on the road to destruction, mm -hmm. and some are on the road to life. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. What road are you on? You know right Do you know that you even know that there's a road? Mm -hmm. Amen. That's how, why you need the Word of God. Yes. Amen. The more of the Word you have, the more wiser you will be. The less of the Word you have, the more vulnerable you will be to the attacks of the enemy. Are you, are you with me? So people are going into completely different directions, which we would agree on. One group wants to preserve life, while another group wants to have the right to destroy life. Yes. One group believes in the genders, given in the Bible, he made them male and female, while the other group believes they can create their own reality by merely announcing it. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, we could stay there a while, but yeah. wait. And on nearly every issue, there are two groups, amen, have opposite beliefs because one group follows the Lord on purpose while the other group follows their own opinions, regardless of what the Bible teaches. Is that true? Yep. Yeah, people following two different paths. Amen. And uh, uh, we've kind of thrown God out in America, but he's coming back. Amen. I say he's yeah. coming back because yeah. we're inviting him back. Yes. There's a lot of good things happening in, in Washington, D.C. Amen. In Congress, with our congressmen and congresswomen, we have more born again, spirit-filled congressmen and women in Congress than ever before. And they are having an effect. Amen. Amen. And believe me, what you see today is not going to continue. Right. I said it's not going to continue. Woo! I believe the prophets have been saying, and I, I, I concur with it, we have one more rodeo. Hmm. At least one more. There's one more door that's open to us in America. One more opportunity to be the nation. That God, amen? amen, that God brought to pass in this, in so long ago. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so we see this dichotomy, one on one side, one on the other, on nearly every issue. Amen. And it's perhaps easier than ever before for 
people to see the vast difference between people who believe in God and follow His ways and those who do not. Yeah. I mean, it's become very clear who the saints are and who the ain'ts are. I mean, no, you're either a saint or an ain't. You say, well, I can't be a saint. You know, I know your vision of who a saint is is not the right vision. That's I know they have saints in, in a religion, but uh, a saint or anyone who has been uh, born again by the Spirit of God, who has received Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, amen? amen. Have a new life, such as given. God calls all of those saints. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And so, uh, 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 you either a saint or an ain't. I was an ain't, but now I'm a saint. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, glory to God. Some of you got excited about that. I like that. Yeah. 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 And so the, the division is being very clearly seen. We're finding who is and who isn't. We're seeing people we thought were right on and were trying to do what's right. That when the pressure has been on here, we find out that their views are not biblical world views. They are worldly and secular and devilish. Amen. And we're seeing more and more who is and who isn't. And uh, you're not having to guess anymore of, of, of who is following Christ and who is not following him. Amen. And I, I, I believe God is doing that. He, he has a way of separating the wheat from the tares, the tares from the wheat. Amen. Amen. And the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, good, and I believe we're getting close to that time when the angels are going to come and Amen. the Lord is going to catch uh, His church up into the air. Amen. Amen. And uh, I can tell you more about that, but be ready. That's all I can tell you is be yes. ready. Because it happens in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. <laughs> Amen. And uh, the dead in Christ shall rise and we which are alive shall, uh, shall arise and then remain and we so shall we be with the Lord forevermore. Amen. Amen. And so if you see somebody rising, it's not magic. Amen. <laughs> God, is, God is doing the real deal. Amen. Not by demons, but by His Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed, happy are the people whose God is the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so it's extremely committed to following. Having citizens who are committed to following the Lord is extremely important for preserving religious liberty. Amen. And ultimately our freedom as a nation. Yeah. One of the founding fathers said this nation, this republic, is made for God-fearing people who honor the word of God and follow the Lord. It is not sufficient for any other people. And we can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. And so we, we must have our brother. We must come back to God. Yes. Amen. America must. Amen. And I can tell you several things that are happening that will encourage you. Texas has legislation here right now to put the Ten Commandments back in schools. Right. Yeah. 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 Florida has legislation to put prayer back in school. Yeah. Right. Louisiana legislature passed a unanimous, unanimous uh, 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 legislation to put the Bible back in schools. And as pointed out, the Bible has the best history for the past 6,000 years. Can you say that? Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. For a few moments, uh, 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 on the exhortation, fathers don't make your children bitter. Amen. Online. We want to focus on that. Uh, I may know bitterness leads to hopelessness. Uh -huh. and, and the cause, hopelessness, is why we see so many deaths with our young people at period, but people, period. Our, our culture is causing great confusion. And where there is confusion, the Bible says, there is every evil work. Amen. And, and we see that because of the wisdom of this world versus the wisdom of God. Amen. And so we see that uh, our culture is, is having a lot of problems. Amen. Amen. And so the Bible says there's every James 3, 16. What are some of these right values and right perspectives? Uh, I'm glad you asked. And even though the backdrop of the nation is dark, I see light. I said, I see light. Amen. Amen. I said, there's a light in that tunnel. Amen. And it's not another locomotive coming the other way. You'll get that when you see the tunnel. Amen. Yeah, that'll get you about 3 o'clock this afternoon. You say, oh, oh, yeah. 
Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And so we see God is working in the nation. Amen. I'm just sharing a couple things with you. God is on the move and uh, uh, we are seeing some great things happening. 90% of teenagers, though, I saw do not read the Bible. 90% of teenagers do not read their Bible. With a high percentage of parents and adults who also don't read their Bible. Come on. We are so busy in our culture, we hardly have time to eat breakfast in the morning. Come on. We're glad if we got our pants on and our shirt on and, you know, hair combed and brush teeth, teeth brushed. Brush teeth, amen. Hallelujah, okay. Yeah, you can brush them too. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so we see that we're just getting a snack here or there. Uh, I may know that if you're just snacking, it's not going to be very good. You need to get a good meal from the Word of God. Amen. Spiritually get fed, amen? amen? Spiritually get fed. Amen. The more you read the Word of God and get God's Word and His love letter to you, Amen? The better off you're going to be. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So we see here, uh, as a long-time senior pastor, I'm concerned that so many of us have not been clear on what a biblical worldview is. Amen? Versus a, a worldly worldview. And so what is a biblical worldview exactly? Amen? Let me begin by saying some things that are, there are some things worth fighting for and there are th some things worth dying for. Amen. Uh, some hills are worth dying on, and some are not. Amen. And we need to determine which one is that important. Amen. And there are some important hills today. As a million men and women have given their lives fighting for our freedom, amen, over the last two <laughs> millennia here in America, uh, we can see that there are things worth fighting for and worth dying for. Amen. amen. Are you willing to fight for freedom, religious freedom in America? Are you willing to fight, amen, for religious freedom in America? Because they do not want any religion anywhere in this culture. And they are fighting and doing their best to erase it completely out. Amen. God help us. But we're working just as hard and harder to put it back in. Glory to God. Hallelujah! Yeah, yeah, that's why we have hope, and there is hope today because God, amen, has not left us. Amen. And so we see the things that we're fighting. Before there can be a marriage, I mean, know there has to be an idea that it's not good for a man to be alone. Huh? Genesis 2.18. I told you he needs help. Amen. It says Genesis 1.27 says he made them, male and female. In his image and likeness. Amen. God designs God design of two sexes. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Before there was freedom, there was the idea that individuals are created equal. Huh? We're looking at the biblical worldview now. Our beliefs determine our behavior. Your beliefs will determine your behavior. Bad behavior, bad beliefs. Okay, hallelujah. Boy, I got real quiet in here. Hallelujah. Everything we do begins with an idea. Before there can be courage, there has to be a belief that some things are worth sacrificing for. Amen. It's true that all ideas have consequences, but we're less aware that all consequences are the fruit of ideas. Starts here. Amen. That's why we need to have our minds renewed by the Word of God. Amen. Your spirit got saved, yeah. but your mind didn't. And your body, your body didn't either. Amen? You, the Word of God has to the, determine and control the emotions, the passions. Amen? Otherwise, we just go all wild. <laughs> I know you're not going to say amen on that one. Amen. Yeah. Our beliefs determine our behavior. Everything we do begins with an idea. Amen. Amen. It's true that all the ideas have consequences. Before there was murder, how many know there was hate? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Before there was a holocaust, 
Before there was, there was the extermination of Hitler and six million Jews and Christians and others. There was a belief that some people and that other people are undesirable. Yes. That some are better than others. But all men are created equal. Come on. Yeah, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Case in point, uh, 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 Hillary calling 80 to 100 million Americans deplorables. Mm. Well, I'm glad to be a deplorable. Amen. If that's how you see it. Amen. Amen. But uh, God's uh, not looking that way because we support some candidate or, you know, accused of being cultish. And yes. I tell you, the devil has a lot of ways to try to, try to make you back off. Yes, he does. Amen. But you need to know what you know, believe what you know is true, and stand for it. Amen. Amen. So all that other deplorable stuff is just sour grapes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now get our beliefs determined. Amen. What our behavior is about. Amen. And what our behavior is going to be. Amen. I asked the Lord one time, I said, Lord, what in the world is going on with this president two presidents ago? I said, oh, God Almighty. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Lord spoke about him. He said, he's wrong-headed. I said, is that all? Wrong-headed. That's putting it mildly. But you see, he was right. God's right. Wrong-headed. They're wrong-headed. Their beliefs are wrong. Yeah. They believe. They lied so much, they believe their own lies. Yeah. yeah. God help us. Amen. Yeah. So our behavior about life's biggest questions will determine our worldview. Yeah. Your, your answer to life's questions where does life begin? Where did I come from? Huh? It wasn't the stork. You were too heavy for the stork. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You remember the little boy I told you? They were doing a paper in school. So he said, I want to answer the question where you came from. And he, he asked mama, he asked grandma, he asked somebody else. said, well, they, you all came from a stork. He says, so he wrote his paper, he says, and he gave his thing to the church, school, he says, this is, uh, this is the first family that uh, has never had a natural birth. All right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Look at somebody say, you think you're normal. what is right and wrong. Where did I come from? I may know those are the questions that either a biblical view or a world view and the ideas will take you somewhere. If you don't believe God has created life and is a creator, then you're going to maybe fall into the thing that life, you know, we can do what we want with life. No, you can't do what you want. You can do what you want with your life but you're not God to do what you want with my life. Right. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And so this wrong thinking, we have half of America that's not thinking right. Yeah. Come on, we have half of America that's not biblically world viewing what's, what God has said. Yeah. Now it didn't used to be half of America. We were getting by when it was just up to a certain point. We could, we could you know, make the balance on the on the God side. But now you've got so many that are not with the biblical view that now there's no telling what something's going to turn out except as we have faith and prayer and believing God. Amen. And miracles, really God working miracles, amen, and, and signs and wonders uh, with this divided nation. Yes. The Bible says they are, or to the term divided, what, united we stand? Divided we fall. And so we're we're in some real perilous times. Amen. Amen. And we are about to fall, but we're not going to fall. 
because we got half of America that believe in the biblical worldview. Amen. And even some that are not born again are still standing with people who believe it. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so our answer to these questions will explain why people see the world so differently. And as you and I know the answers to these questions, they're all found in the Bible. Can you say amen? God's word and his love letter to us. Amen. To every one of us. Debates about abortion are really about when our life gets its value. Debates over sexuality, gender, and marriage are really disagreements about whether the rules are made by us or for us by God. What we think of as political debates are often much more than that. They're disagreements about the purpose of our lives and the source of truth. Either Jesus is Lord or the state is Lord. Either God is supreme, either he's the master, or the state is master and yes. supreme. They want to be supreme. It's called socialism. It's called communism. Mm -hmm. I heard someone so arrogantly say, you own nothing and you'll like it. Wow. What? Yeah, actually came out and said that in public. You own nothing and you'll like it. Are those elites? God help us. Amen. Yeah. So debates about these things. Uh, either Jesus is Lord or He's not. And as Christians, our goal must be to think biblically about everything. Let me say it again. Your goal, my goal, is to think about everything biblically. What does God say about this? Not what this person says, not what that person says, not what I think or don't think. What does God say? Amen. The truth, you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. If you don't know the truth and don't get the truth, you'll believe a lie, right. and you will not be free even though you think you're free. That's right. Come on now. Yeah. Hallelujah. And so our goal must be to think biblically about everything. Well, if you don't know your Bible, read your Bible, you won't know how to think biblically. The more the words you get, the more you understand what biblical worldview is, what God says about it, what God thinks. Amen? They're teaching our kids that we just came from the Big Bang. Mm. No, no, we came from a creator. That's right. Amen? Look at your watch if you're wearing a watch. That's not going to happen in a million years. Somebody had to put that together. Right. There had to be a watchmaker. Right. Amen? Yeah. Look at your physical body and everything. I mean, yeah, big thing. <laughs> it takes more faith to believe that right. stupidity than anything yeah. else. Yeah. Amen. Amen. No, God made me. Amen. God saw me in the womb, the Bible says. He formed me while I was yet in the secret place of my mother's womb. Hallelujah. Yeah. He saw me before the foundation of the world, the Bible yeah. says. I was in God's heart. Amen. I was a gleam in God's eye before He made the world. Hallelujah. He saw me. He wanted me. He loved me. Amen. Whether you've been wanted or not, loved or not, God loves you. God wanted you here. Amen. God cares about you. Hallelujah. God said, I'll be a father to the fatherless. I'll be a mother to the motherless. Hallelujah. Yes, we have a lot of fatherless children, but thank God we have a heavenly father. Yes. Thank yes. God that when I didn't get here, I'm getting there. Glory, yes. Ooh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And so uh, uh, there's a lot of disagreements about the purpose of our lives and source of truth, but we know that Jesus said he is the way, the yes. truth, and the life. Yes. Amen. He answers the question of what is truth. Amen. And then he says, you will know the truth when you come to know me. Yes. Amen. And it will make you free. Yes. Hallelujah. All right. Well, somebody want to be their own God and write the rules they like. Amen. Amen. We have so many more translations of people who write their own Bibles. Come on. Oh, you've come never on. written your own Bible? Well, okay. I tore a few pages out of mine. <laughs> and, and wrote in what I wanted. Amen. And that didn't work. So I, I had to get a new one and put it back in. Amen. 
Hallelujah. How many have found out this thing's not going to work your way? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. How long did it take you to figure that out? It took me a long time. I know you don't want to admit it. Amen. I know you're smarter than that. But uh, some of us are smarter than others. I won't point out anybody. But uh, I found out, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I found out it's not going to work my way, that it'll only work God's way, that there is an empty place in my heart, in life, that only God can fill. I can't fill it with anything else. I can't fill it with this, with that, with that. People, we try to, but we come to realize God is the only one who will really, truly satisfy us. Really, truly, truly, truly give you the love unconditional that you need and you want. Amen. Thank God for that unconditional love. Look at my good days, my bad days. Amen. Luckily, when I look in the mirror more, my hair is going to him. I just thank God I got any to go anywhere. Amen. Hallelujah. Some left during the night, but there's still some. Hallelujah. We have a hair to God. He comes around at night. Amen. And casting him out, but he keeps coming back. Amen. You gotta pray for me, amen. Yeah. All right. the pastor's losing it. No, I'm not. No, 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 no. I'm good. I'm good. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. People want to be their own God, write their own rules. Oh. We've all been there, done that. Oh, yeah. Some are still there, picking shoes like a buffet line yeah. or a smorgasbord. I like that. I don't like that. I'll take that, but not that. I believe that, but I don't believe that. Yeah. Well, that'll mess you up. Amen. Yeah. You want to believe what God says in, on everything. And our goal is to help you see beyond red and blue. Yes. Come on, left and right. Yes. I said we've got to see beyond red and blue and left yes. and right. Amen? Amen? There's a certain part of that that we need. Amen. But we've got to see beyond that. Praise Amen. God. To see the battle of ideas. The, the root of it all. Our goal is to equip. Amen? Is to equip. Christians with a biblical worldview and help them stand, amen, for and advance and defend the faith yeah. in their families, in their communities, yeah. and in the public square. Yeah. Come on, that's a mouthful yeah. right there. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Let me say it again. Our goal here is to equip Christians with a biblical worldview. Life has value. You do not have the right to take a life. I said, you do not have a right to kill a baby. Amen. All life, God gives life, and your life goes back to God. How we can be so deceived in America with the belief, and fight for it, and yell for it, and march for it, the right to murder babies. Yes. Good God. Come on, Pastor. That's the worldview. Yeah. I can be a man, or I can be a woman. No, you can't. Come on, you either got the Y chromosome or the X or whatever you got. <laughs> Amen. Some have two, but it's very, very, very few that are born that way. They usually get, you know, one or the other. Amen. Hallelujah. So if I come in here telling you I'm a woman, you want to tell me, Pastor, you need to leave. Amen. <laughs> we want to pray for you first. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So uh, don't be coming in here with no dress on if you're a guy. <laughs> we're going to help you out. Then we're going to help you out. Yeah. Hallelujah. And if you have any questions about whether you're a man or a woman, just look about uh, uh, about 12 inches down, and you'll you you you'll get the answer. Right now. Uh, trying to help you. Trying to help. We are so confused. Hallelujah. 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 I'm so glad we have so many happy men and women in this church. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I'm, I'm getting more encouraged out every moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so our goal is to help them see what it is. Amen? And, and how to advance and defend the faith and defend it for their families, their communities, their public square. Cultural renewal doesn't begin with campaigns and elections. It begins with individuals turning from lies to truth. Amen. Amen. Turning from lies to truth. Hallelujah. But that won't happen if people can't recognize a lie 
and don't believe truth exists. We've been taught that truth is what relational, it's whatever you want to make it. It's whatever you think it is. No, no it's not. Truth is what God said it is. Jesus is the truth and the way of the life. Amen? There's only one way. There's only His truth and there's only life in that. Anything else is death and ultimate destruction. And God help me continue to pray for people that are caught in this, these lies. And the devil makes them sound so good, doesn't he? No, I'm not a woman, I'm a birth mother. Oh, come on, man. Yeah, you're a birth mother, but you're also, you're, I'm a birth woman. You're a woman, you're a, okay. Leave it alone, man. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so we have a lot going on in this cultural renewal. Uh, uh, but uh, Jesus said you'll know the truth. Amen. So in closing, we must see the spiritual war behind the political war. I said we've got to see the spiritual war behind the political war. We've got to realize that there are powers and principalities, rulers of darkness that are over nations. And it's where the Christians pray. Amen. God has angels to help us. Like he, like he helped Daniel, the Archangel Michael, and Gabriel who brought the message. God has angels that are moving now here in, in America. Yeah. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Yeah. And how many know there's more with us than against us? Yeah. 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 And if God is for you, who can be against you anyway? Amen. But only one third of the angels fell from heaven. Yeah. Only one third of the angels. Yeah. Two thirds stayed, remained. That's two to one. Those are good odds. I'm not saying go to Vegas on that, but amen. Just uh, yeah, if you're a bet, you can bet on that. Two are better than one. I'm not encouraging you betting. Amen. So don't everybody leave and go to Vegas after church. You know, but, uh, but I'm not going to condemn anybody either. Sometimes we we like the bright lights, do we not? Yes. Yeah. I have to be careful here because I can get roasted. Amen. Amen. We like. How many of God is everywhere? And I'm going to know every city is a sin city. You mean Lancaster? Lancaster. Oh, yeah. Every city. Yeah. But God is in everything. Right. I said God's in everything. Yes. You can't keep God out of nothing. Yes. God will be glorified. Yes. Ooh, hallelujah. Thank you. So there's a spiritual war going on behind, amen, behind the political war. The, the truth claims behind the press releases and the, uh, the can't see the forest from the trees. Can you say amen? amen. And so in part two of this series, uh, Lord willing, I want to explore the idea of American exceptionalism. That we as a nation, we started out exceptional, we are still exceptional. Yes, we have our faults. Yes, we have much to repent for as a nation, but we are still an exceptional nation. Are you with me? Yes. Hallelujah. And we want to we want to look at that because they're saying we're not, and they're trying to make it so we're not exceptional. Yeah. That's the next message. I, I don't want to get into into that right now. But yeah. in closing, I think to a large degree we have inadvertently provoked our children, provoked our children by not being real clear ourselves on what is true, biblical worldview. Can you see that with me? Yes. And so so many of our teenagers, so many of our young people, as they get up and out of the nest and, and, and many of them leave the church, you wonder if it isn't due to some of them not being clear about what is biblical the biblical worldview. Amen. Life is precious. There's only two genders. Those are just some of the some of the confusion in our culture today. But that's the biblical worldview. There is a creator. Amen. There is life after death. Hallelujah. There's everything God says there is. Amen. And you either believe that there's a creator or you don't. If you don't believe there's a creator, then you believe that you can you can determine the value of, of life. You can take your own life. No, no. No, you can't. 
You can, you have the freedom to do that, but, uh, but it would not be wise. Amen? Amen? So many thought that this was the way out, but God is so, so sad. We want to continue to pray for people that they're, that our nation and people that just <coughs> agitate us. And, amen? That we hear and just get on our nerves. Oh, yeah. Amen? Yeah, you know you've got some of those people. Get on your nerves. You got you, you got the last nerve in your trunk, amen. Right now, hallelujah. Yeah, we got to pray that their eyes will be open. Somebody say, their eyes will be open. That they be turned from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God. That their sins may be forgiven. That's the most important thing. If you don't get your sins forgiven by Jesus, who paid the price on Calvary on the cross, then you're going to have to pay for that. That will be eternal separation from God. Amen. Amen. And we, I am not going to hell. Amen. No, no. And I'm not, and this nation is not going to hell in a handbasket. Amen. Amen. I said we're not going to hell. Amen. This nation's going to have some heaven, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. And so we see that, uh, uh, I think the Lord showed me that in many ways our children have not been clear about what is a true biblical worldview. And uh, uh, that's because we really haven't been cleared on it. Amen. To a large degree. But God will help them and meet them. How many, how many know that even though uh, things happened in your youth, things happened, God came and found you. God came and rescued you. God came and, and redeemed you and made you, brought you back, brought you, brought you away from the enemy. Amen. He became your father, and Jesus became your savior and elder brother. Praise God. And we pray today that, uh, that your eyes would be opened, if that's what needs to happen, yeah. that you'd be turned from darkness to light. We pray that over our nation. We pray that over our leaders. Acts, I believe it's in the 26th chapter. Amen. That we pray. So instead of getting mad, breaking your TV, how many TVs have you bought now? It's a matter what you hear. Bam! I hope you have more control than that. Amen. Amen. It's going to cost you some money if you don't. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But we can pray. I said Amen. we can pray. Amen. We can pray. As, as furious as we get with what we're hearing and what they're doing. God, open their eyes. Their eyes. They're under the cloud. They're under the influence. They're under the influence of the, of the devil. That's why they do what devils do. That's why they murder what devils like. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. God, open their eyes. Turn. Turn them from darkness to light. Turn. Turn them, Lord. Turn them. People are turning right now. Right now while we're sitting here, God is answering that prayer. He is turning people from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan to God. That their sins may be forgiven. That's the most important thing. My God, if they go into eternity without having their sins forgiven, it's not going to be good. Amen. It's going to be really bad. Praise God. I amen. encourage you to, amen, get right with God. Praise God. Follow Him. Amen. amen. And so we see right values and right perspectives are found in the Word of God, the Bible. The Bible has all the answers of life's questions. Where did I come from? Who decides what's right and wrong? What happens when I die? Amen. All good questions. And I may know they're worthy of an answer. Amen. The answers come to these questions will keep life from becoming meaningless and hopeless. It'll keep life from becoming meaningless and hopeless. Amen. Hallelujah. How many know that you can be a millionaire and life can become meaningless and hopeless? They have committed suicide. Had had it all. Had it all. And so we see that that is not the answer. Getting all you can. Canning all you get is like to say, and sitting on the can. Amen. Yeah. It's more than that. Can you say that? Amen. And so we know God decides what's right and wrong. Amen. Yes. He's decided what happens when you die. And he decided where you came from. Yeah. Hallelujah. So without answer to these questions, yeah, we can all, we'd all be taking drugs and getting high. And getting drunk. Huh? Well, I can't blame people getting high and getting drunk. If they don't know the whole, the truth. Yeah. 
life becomes meaningless and hopeless. Yeah. Might as well check out. You might as well get what you can, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. And that's it. Nothing after that. That's the world view. But I'm going to know when you die, it just begins. It just starts. That's, that's just beginning. Life doesn't begin at 40. Life begins when you, when you die. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. So we want, without answers, it's questions. Amen. So praise God. Turn them up in the way they should go. If we don't know the way or not, we're not clear about it, they won't be either. Amen. Amen. So there's hope no matter how old you are. I said there's hope no matter how old they are. There's hope no matter how old you are. Hallelujah. And some of you are kind of old. I'm not trying not to look at anybody. Look at myself. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So there's hope no matter how old you are. That ought to encourage you at least on one side. And there's hope no matter how old they are. Some of them 40-year-old babies, come on now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you haven't seen a 40-year-old baby? Oh, yeah. 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 Sometimes people refuse to grow up, don't they not? Do they? Yeah. Yeah. But praise God, God, life has a way of growing you up. Praise yeah, God. So turn your mother away. There's hope no matter how. Fathers, don't make your children bitter about life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's train them up. Let's find out. Amen. In Jesus' name. Stand with me if you believe any of that this morning. I'm wishing you and blessing you with a wonderful, blessed Father's Day. Amen. God is in the house.